Okay, we can start the meeting. I'm going to open the February 10th, 2021 meeting of the Grandy Inland Wetlands and Water Courses Commission meeting. The meeting. Um, first item on the agenda are the minutes of the January 13th, 2021 meeting. Does anyone have any comments, questions, corrections on those meeting minutes? I move they be accepted. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on it? Okay. All in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Any, anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Okay. The uh, minutes of the January 13th meeting have been accepted. Um, next item on the agenda are the public hearings. <clears throat> First one is on the Griffin Road Bridge over the Hungry Brook. Um, I'll just read that again. Permit application for proposed Griffin Road Bridge replacement over the Hungry Brook within a regulated area. Does someone want to speak to this as far as the public hearing goes? Anyone want to make a big statement? Anyone on the commission have any questions, that, uh, comments? Any members of the public would like to ask a question or make a comment. Excuse me, Dave. Yes. Do you want to have Mike give a full presentation since we're setting the record for the um, okay, well, hearing? All right. Essentially, everything okay. that happened at the last meeting is not part of this new record. Oh, oh, sorry. OK, uh, Mike, could you uh, repeat yourself from last month? Sure. Uh... Did you guys actually open the hearing? Uh, what was that? Have you opened the hearing yet? No. I did. Yeah, we're good. We're good to go. Okay. Well, my name is Mike Fanning. I'm an engineer for WMC Consulting Engineers. We were hired by the town to design and permit uh, the bridge replacement. And I'm going to uh, put up the presentation and share it with you, hopefully. some reason it's not sharing. There we are. So hopefully you can see that. Yeah, looks good, Mike. Okay, so this is a state local bridge project, which means it's a that's the funding source for the work. And it's the replacement of the bridge over the brook as stated. Uh, looking at the aerial, you can see the red lines are property lines. The blue lines are the estimated floodplain for the uh, brook crossing of the road. It's uh, the existing bridge is 18 and a half feet wide and the road is 22 feet wide. It has no skew, which means the road is perpendicular to the river. 
uh, and the existing bridge is field stone, local stones mortared together to make the abutments. Uh, the last time it was inspected was January 2018, and it was noted to be in poor condition. Uh, sometime soon after the road was closed because of the, the bridge was becoming a danger to traffic. It's also hydraulically inadequate, which means it can't pass even the 50 year flood. It's supposed to pass the 100, but it doesn't even pass the 50. Uh, there's no FEMA floodway. It's in a zone A, which is means there was no detailed analysis of the of the brook done. It's just a, a rough estimate as to the floodplain width. And there's no estimate as to the depth of the water or anything like that. Um, and you can see 11 and a half square mile drainage area. So looking east, you can see the road has been closed for quite a while. And then looking west, the upstream and downstream face. And looking at the upper left hand picture, you can see an area that's kind of yellow on the abutment. That's where the abutment is starting to disintegrate. And it looks like it's going to fall apart. And then looking at below that, you can see the bottom of the bridge, the metal beams, very, very, very thick rust which means the cross-sectional area of the metal has been lost and the strength has been lost also. So looking at the FEMA map, the single blue is the uh, A zone. And you can tell down here at the bottom of the page, that's where the brook intersects Salmon Brook. And that's been studied in detail. And the brown is the 500-year flood of Salmon Brook, and the hatched area is the floodway of Salmon Brook. So you're pretty close. So close that they're saying that the backwater from the flood of Salmon Brook comes up to Griffin Road. There's a little line which you may not be able to see there. That's the estimated end of the flood from Salmon Brook. So looking at this, the dark line is the edge of the stream. The lighter blue is the thin strip of wetlands that goes along the edges of the stream, except you have a swale that goes off to the east that was probably constructed a long time ago when the road was built. So roughly, this is the, the outline of the construction process install the erosion sediment control measures, um, make sure the road is closed off. They're going to relocate the overhead utilities so they can safely bring a crane in. They'll move the wires off to the side. Uh, then remove the existing deck, install the uh, coffer dams around the abutments, and remove the abutments in the wing walls, install the new ones, this is out of order. Then they remove the coffer dams and then grade the channel, install the new superstructure, complete the road work, and then the restoration work of the area around the bridge. So this shading indicates the estimated impacts. The light green is new water course that's created by uh, widening the bridge. The bridge is about 10 feet wider than the existing bridge. And the blue at the corners there are wetland impacts. And you can see on the table up above, you have temporary and permanent water course impacts. The total 1375 square feet. And then a minimal amount of wetland impacts just because there aren't any. That's only 91 square feet. So elevations from looking upstream and downstream, you can see we make a little center channel that keep the water together in low flow conditions and then grade up 
two to one to the to the road elevation. The, the, the proposed bridge will pass the 50 year flood, but it still won't pass the 100 year flood. So we've left open guardrails here. So there's some hydraulic relief, the water can go through the railing up here on the parapet. Now this is floodplain impacts. You can see the entire job is within the floodplain. So uh, we take out 144 cubic yards and because the, the bridge opening is wider, we put less back. So we end up with a net of 42 cubic yards excavated. This is what the temporary condition looks like with the, uh, the bold dashed line uh, being uh, the coffer dams, the temporary coffer dams around the abutments. And uh, the new, new abutments are, you can see are about five feet behind the existing abutments. So this is a uh, hydraulic modeling, this is a summary. Uh, the top is the estimated flow rates. The, the 100 year is the design, and that's estimated to be 1810 CFS. And using that number, we tabulate down in the bottom, and we end up with about a six tenths of a foot reduction in water surface elevation upstream of the bridge and nothing downstream of the bridge. So in the summary again for hydraulics, 11 and a half square mile drainage area designed for the 100 year. There's the existing and proposed water surface elevations upstream of the bridge at the approach to the thing. And at the bottom here, the 20 CFS is a simple equation that estimates the, what, what's going on in, in an average day. So just for record, uh, we're looking at the NDDB map. Uh, we're outside any area of endangered species, so that's not an issue with this site. And environmentally, uh, the best management practices will be used at all times. The contractor will have to submit a plan to the uh, field inspector and to the town prior to the starting the work and the plan has to be approved. And so there's a record of what the plan is and anyone can check it at any time they want. Well, always want to keep the wetland impacts to a minimum. And then for the Corps of Engineers, the time of year for uncontrolled work in the channel is from June 1st to September 30th, but there's no plan to use it to do any unconfined work. And then everything will be restored. And other than the uh, town permit, we'll do what used to be called a category one, which is now called self verification to the core, which means you send in a one page form about a month before construction starts saying what, when do you think the work will start and end and who's going to do the construction. And it's basically a record keeping item for the core. So the, the work is supposed to be done this, this year. It will be put out to bid as soon as the permits are done. And it'll take about eight months. It's estimated to be just about $2 million with the uh, the money being split between the town and the state 50 50. And um, so the contacts for the town are the town engineer, the director of public works. And here, uh, Keegan Elder is the project manager. So that's that would be it for the presentation. I may, Dave. Does anyone have any comments or questions? Dave, if I if I may, just um, kind of go through 
Um, or maybe, Mike, you can go through the staff comments, the comments that I had, and, and how those were addressed. Well, why, why don't you prompt me? I don't have them right in front of me, then I'll, I'll go through them. No problem. Um, so, uh, before I start, just one quick question for, for record keeping. So, and for the commission, if you notice, maybe about uh, two hours ago, you got an email with some plans attached. So those will be the most recent set of plans. Um, Mike, is there a like a revision date on these? Because everything I'm, I see only has February 4th on it. No, we don't usually revise plans until they're done. Once the construction contract starts, the plans will be revised if anything changes. But... For now, they're all uh, proposed plans, so we don't usually revise them. Okay, it just got confusing having three renditions of, to know which one is correct. So, um, well, the one we just sent you, the name of the file is today's date. Okay, perfect. All right. So, well, maybe it's something where. Um, as part of any kind of write-up that we need in regards to what plans are related, is there any way we can have something beyond February 4th? Because this, the February 4th plans were what we originally received or some way we can- uh, We can send you something, uh, you know, presuming nothing changes tonight, we can just send you a final set and have some other day. That'd be great. Cause it's very confusing. Um, okay. Keeping track of them. And, so, um, okay, so just a comments, and I'm gonna go from um, Mike's response letter that he gave us, which is dated February 4th. And um, so please, my comment was, please provide details for mitigation methods on the permit plans. Please show the locations of the, in the details for material storage, removal, staging areas, location, uh, dewatering methods and location, and final stabilization bank, watercourse substrate, exposed soils. Um, and the response is location for material storage, staging, and dewatering have been added to the plans. No removal of material is anticipated. Stabilization is required for all disturbed areas. So um, I had gone through the plans that were received previously, and there was a couple, uh, the dewatering note that had gotten onto the other set didn't get onto this, but it is on the most recent set that you've just received. There's a, a quick dewatering note. And in going through this, I was kind of remembered of Condot's um, process. And on the first sheet, uh, you guys will see that, which note is it? So uh, general notes. And on that first sheet, they to the bottom. Yeah, five. So this one references that all the work would be done in accordance with Form 818, Section 1.1. Um, from CONDOT and then requires that everybody follow the BMPs from the 2002 Erosion and Sedimentation Control Guidelines. So, you know, a lot of the detail that you would probably see on uh, a private plan that wasn't a state project would not have, would have, a, you know, the detail for a dewatering or show these kind of things. This just brings them to all the details that are in these documents. So if you're, I, I went in and looked at both of them and, um, so anything that they're proposing in here, as long as it's called out, the detail and the methods and the options to use are all within that, those guidelines. And Mike, please correct me at any point if I'm speaking incorrectly. Yeah, but I would just remember, recall that I also said that they, they're required to submit a plan prior to construction. So beyond that, they're going to tell you what they're supposed to do. And, and it'll be on record, so it'll be easy to audit them and see if they're deviating from whatever it is they were approved to do. So who's they? Is it we'll be submitting our plan as a town or the contractor? No, the contractor is required to submit a an erosion control plan. Oh, oh yes. All right. Um, so the next comment was, and, and please, everybody, please feel free to stop me at any point. I'm just going to keep rolling through these unless somebody wants otherwise. 
Uh, the hydraulic report suggests that some round rip rep be placed under the bridge abutments. Uh, please include this suggestion on the permit plans, which was done. So um, I don't know, Mike, if you have the plans to share and you can show that detail uh, that was done. in. I can try that. I have the plans. It may take a few seconds. Yeah. That's okay. And I'll, I'll read your response when I pull them up. So channel boulders have been added along the main channel under the bridge and a detail added to the plans. Channel boulders are preferred by Connecticut DEP fisheries for aiding in maintaining the channel boundaries while also offering refuge for various small aquatic organisms. The fisheries people like that a lot, the uh, aquatic organism thing. Spoken like a true engineer. <laughs> All right, I can't find my plans. There they are. They're underneath the. Uh, uh, can you see those? Not, yeah, I think you might have to stop sharing and then reshare because okay. you have your old. I think it says do share. Okay. Work. There it is. Okay. So, first, the note the. Kate referred to is on the lower left on this. And then you can see the boulders here, but they're not too clear. They're best observed when you come down to in this area. I'm going to zoom in. Hang on here. You can see the boulders are sort of buried. And they're going to, in this case, they'll sit on top of the old abutments which would be uh, the piece of them would be left in place. And this, it helps to uh, sustain the slope that comes into the channel and it uh, stabilizes the edge of the, the main part of the channel. And as I said, it's an also, because there's gaps, it's a, a place where little bugs and other things hide that make the fish happy fish will eat those things and so it's also uh, beneficial to the channel quality of life so to speak thank you uh, comment number three is sheet pm to3 uh, this seems to be a good location to include watercourse creation area calculation to the impact calculation legend uh, I did not see us taking the credit for the creation of stream bed the notes on the detail sheet detail wait sorry the notes on this sheet detail the final stabilization of disturbed areas. Please define here what restored means, i.e. 70% native vegetation growth over 90% of the area or something similar. Um, and then the response from WMC, uh, these plans will also be forwarded to the U U.S. Army Corps of Engineers who does not allow credit for uh, watercourse area mitigated. Um, so it's not advisable to add this information to the plans. In lieu, we report that we have an additional 238 square feet of new watercourse area created by the widening of the hydraulic opening of the bridge. A note regarding restoration is added to the plans. So um, we have those on there as well. I shaded the uh, watercourse creation area. And then on that same sheet, which is sheet three again, um, note number two talks about what stabilized or restored means. That's all set. Um, item number four, we'll be using erosion control blankets. And if so, please show or define the location of these features on the plans. The WMC response, erosion control blankets are not anticipated for such short slopes. However, if the contractor proposes them, they may be installed if a change order allowing the added expense is approved. Item five, it appears that there's a good amount of drainage that comes down from Griffin Road to the east. Has the management of these flows been accounted for in the project design to prevent erosion? Please explain. It appears that the field to the northeast of the swale that leads directly to the roadway leads directly to the roadway as well. WMC response, drainage design is not in the scope of this project. If runoff is coming from the adjacent agricultural fields, the town should direct the property owner to manage runoff on the property rather than discharging to the road. A permit application to the board may be required if the condition does not meet the agricultural exclusion in the regulations. So um, 
Can you guys see my mouse on this? Probably not. Yeah, please explain where that drainage is again. Yeah, so essentially going up, going the right way. On the plants, it would be to the upper right. Yeah, it's like up in this area. I can't see you. You're, okay, no idea. See that green? Okay, just, yeah. Uh, above that is a large field uh, that's used. It's in use as an agricultural area, and it's also at a higher elevation. There's a, a, a bank here that comes down to the road. And I think what's what Kate's suggesting is that runoff comes off that field and gets down onto the road or in the proximity to the road, depending on the circumstances. And, it, and your suggestion is the homeowner is responsible for that? Well, it's not homeowner, it's a commercial farm. Uh, well, we, we own the property, so it's our farm. So you're, okay. you're assuming that it's our responsibility. Yeah, you can't direct right off on the other people's property, even if, so to speak, it's the same owner. Uh, Gerald, if, if that is you as you're labeled, would you just mind um, stating your name and your, your property address and your mailing your um, address in town? 27 Griffin Road. And it's Gerald Weiss? That it is. Thank you very much, sir. So what I don't see in the plan is the elevation of the bridge. Is that stated somewhere in the plan? I looked through it pretty carefully. Well, how much higher will it be than it currently is? It'll be pretty much the same height. If you, if you change the height, then uh, the, the length of the work becomes longer to you know to change the road grade to blend in so essentially it's at the same height the opening is larger that's how it's improved got it, yeah, got it. thank you so gerald while we have you here and, and kirk is here as well um the dbw director i'm sure that the drainage you know of the drainage area that i was speaking of that comes down the hill there from from the fields it's like a little swale well there's a uh, storm drain right at the entrance to the field that's maintained by the town as far as i know i can't see how water comes off the field down the bank to be honest with you but if somebody wants to discuss that i'd be happy to yeah i have both pictures um kirk do you have any comments sure if he I've been there, but to look at it in greater detail, I can certainly go back. I've not seen water run from the field. And if you were to look at the, the basic elevation of the field and as it heads toward Griffin Road, it does go up a little. Uh, so I wouldn't want to call it a berm, but the field elevation is slightly lower. And most of the water runoff is coming directly down the road. It really isn't coming from the field, as I've seen it in the past. Yeah, I concur with that. Okay, great. I, I just saw a, a channel or a little bit looked like there's, you know, had been some erosion there in the past. So, um, you know, I didn't see it flow either. I can't, I can't recall seeing any. You know, certainly um, after this job is done, we'll look to reconstruct the road a bit and um, we can address those situations at that time. If that's agreeable. Sure. All right. So just could keep going through the comments. Um, everybody's ready. So number six on the east side of the bridge along the north side of the road. So we're talking about the same area. There's a steep slope with large dead and dying trees. Um, does any maintenance work need to be done? Here's part of the permit. Uh, along the south side of the road, there's also a small water course that would put any area under the jurisdiction of the Inland and Water Courses regulations. Um, so this area is outside, uh, WMC response. Trees outside the right of way are on private property and not addressed in the bridge design. The town doesn't need a tree warden should inspect the trees if it is determined that the trees are potentially a danger to the contractor's workers or vehicles traveling on Griffin Road. The town will have to come to an agreement with the property owner regarding resolution of dangerous condition. The town attorney may need to be consulted. So um, it sounds like this is something that would just need 
a little bit more looking into down the road as, and it wouldn't be part of the project. Um, and uh, Mr. Weiss, I believe you would be the potential property owner in that area. And I'm sure you know the really big trees that are due for some type of attention. Absolutely. Um, and that may come up again with you and Kirk. Yeah, that's fine. Or with the road work. Uh, number seven is the last one. A draft approval letter and conditions of the approval have been attached for consideration. And WMC response, that is noted. So um, I'm all set with everything in terms of the comments being addressed on the plans. Um, I don't know if anybody else has any questions or comments. I, I do have a question. Who is the actual, is there, has there been a contractor selected to do the work? No, not yet. Okay, I keep on hearing you refer to WKC or WMC, who are they, the engineering firm? Yes, that's us, we're the engineer. Okay. I'll help you out a little bit on that and that'll apply to both of these bridges. So this, this is all through bonding and WMC was uh, our chosen vendor, if you will, to do the engineering work and they will in turn go and interview uh, bridge contractors. And this selection, uh, as soon as we can get the permitting done, we'll start entering into that phase so that hopefully we can break ground in April. Fair enough, Mike? Yeah, yeah. Hey, any uh, comments or questions from the commission members? Okay, hearing none. Are there any members of the public uh, in attendance that would like to question or comment on this project, proposed project? Uh, I'll just say for myself that uh, Kirk's been very cordial and uh, in communication with me. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to continue to work well together through the process. I didn't hear that well. I don't know if it's my speakers or what the story is. Could you repeat that please? Yeah, I, uh, this is Jerry Weiss. I just said that uh, Kurt and I have been in touch over the past months or so, and uh, we have an open dialogue and hopefully that will continue through the whole process. Should be fine. Thank you. Does that mean you signed off on it, Kurt? I'm sorry, you, I didn't catch that. You broke up. Is he signed off on the that he needs to? Dave, you have an audio, or, or I do. Is anybody else hearing him clear? No, Dave's kind of garbled a little bit. You keep, it keeps cutting out. <clears throat> I think he asked if uh, there was any need for him to sign off, but all the work is proposed to be within the right of way. So his property is not directly affected. That's correct. That That's correct. And as a tree warden um, and the relationship that Jerry and I have well, we can take care of business as far as trees or concerns go outside of scope of project. have you say that again with the audio we have to take it to a commission meeting next one uh no not necessarily so um okay. because of the public hearing process the appeal period um or sorry the petition period for a public hearing we don't need to worry about that so um what you do have also available to you are some uh, or some there's one uh draft approval letter so if you're feeling that you're moving in that direction and you don't have any other questions, um, we can go through that or if you have any other questions, but we can make a decision this evening on this one, if you're so ready. 
So just to make sure we're doing it in order, we can close the public hearing for this project and then open the public hearing for the other one and then address the, the, the permit after that? Or what would you suggest? These projects for me are so similar that I prefer keeping them completely separate in discussion. Otherwise, it's easy to cross up what which one you're thinking about for what, because they're both doing similar aspects. So I would say to go through the full process for each hearing and then uh, move to the next hearing. So you're proposing that we would close the public hearing for this particular project and then load on acceptance. We My only recommendation. My only recommendation to that is to maybe discuss the approval letter. That way, if we want Mike or Kirk to give us some responses, we haven't closed the meeting. I'm, I'm confused now. <laughs> I'm just suggesting that we review anything that we need to review where we need the applicant, which is essentially us, but Mike or Kirk. We need their responses. So if we're going through the approval letter and we come up with questions, if we close the meeting or the hearing, then they're not allowed to provide additional information. To put it simply, you want to go through your proposed conditions of approval as set forth on January 28th, 2021, on the, while the public hearing is open so that we can take comments from staff and from the engineer. You got it. Okay. Okay. Got, that. got it. <laughs> okay. I'm now <laughs> <this board. laughs> So what do we want to do right now? Go through the conditions so, that Kate is suggesting we uh, attach to a, an approval where we do approve this project. Were those the ones that you read, Kate? Is that what we're just talking about? Are these these are different ones? No, if you keep flipping through the packet, the there is a draft approval letter. It's dated January twenty eighth. It <laughs> says on the top, uh, Hungry Brook on Griffin Road, which you'll be able to tell which one's which. It's addressed to John Ward. It's directly after that letter that um, Kate just went through with the responses. So in your packet. So would we need a uh, motion to approve the uh, to approve the letter for the application uh, to the to the applicant, and then we open discussion. Correct. What. Uh, I'm, Mike? I'm on this, this point. Um, no, I think I think Kate wants to talk <clears throat> about it <clears throat> before gather comments from the public and the engineer, then make the motion so that if we have to amend based on the comments that we hear from the public, we can do that as part of the discussion for approval after the motion is made. Do I have that right, Kate? Yeah, that's why we keep the lawyer on the team. Yeah. <laughs> As you said, once you close the hearing, no one can add anything. Okay, right. so this is to be done before we can close the public hearing, right? Just that. Okay. We can close the public hearing, but we won't have the benefit of comments on the types of conditions um, we're contemplating um, at this point. And we won't be able to get comments from the public, including Mr. Weiss or our um, director of public works. So it makes sense to me to keep the public hearing open and, and let our inland wetlands official kind of go through what she thinks should be possibly in the motion to approve. I will take silence as a as a as a affirmative. <laughs> um, so, uh, looking at this, 
Yeah. First of all, we have the plans being referenced. Um, we will need to just make sure the date that's in there is whatever date is going to go on the plans that um, see and uh, Michael submit. And um, it just kind of lists, lists in there items one, two, three, and four, the information that we have on this that we made our decision from. So unless you want to add something more to that section in regards to reasoning for your decision, um, I'll move to the potential conditions. Hearing nothing, I'll move on. Um, so the conditions are fairly standard. Uh, we, the office would be notified 48 hours prior to start of any maintenance activities, which will change that to construction. And that uh, item two, town staff, staff shall inspect and install erosion controls prior to start of work that result in uh, earth disturbance activities. Prior to start of work, as Mike had mentioned, uh, a copy of the erosion and sedimentation control plan for the project shall be submitted to the Office of Community Development. Also prior to the start of construction, this is item four. Uh, actually, we could probably let this go. It says a final set of revised permit plans shall be submitted for review and approval by the Inland Wellness Agent. Plan modification shall include those listed on the 2221 Agent Review Memorandum. Other modifications are made. A list of these modifications have been presented with the revised permit plan. So I guess the only thing that we're missing on these plans is what the final date would be. I don't I, unless someone I else has say today's date would probably make sense, right? Okay. So we'll, we'll make the date 210 for the plans. Yeah. 210-21. And then we'll just eliminate item number four unless anybody feels otherwise. Um this project is going to have a construction inspector. So uh, the construction inspector nominated to be on site during construction activities to act as the town's liaison during construction shall be presented to the IWWC or their designated agent in writing for approval prior to the start of construction. Uh, in accordance with the project DEEP Fisheries Division determination dated 8-25-20 and as amended, the stream bed shall be graded to include a channel that is six feet wide and one foot deep to facilitate this fish passage during low flow conditions, which that is shown on the plans. Uh, and item B, proper erosion and sedimentation control shall be installed and maintained throughout the duration of the project. Care should be exercised so as to not increase turbidity levels. As a best management practice, any unconfined in-stream work within Hungry Brook shall be restricted to the period from June 1st to September 30th, 30th inclusive. And these come directly, like I said, from the um, letter from fisheries. So my purpose for adding these type of things is just to have redundancy so it doesn't get missed. Um, so at least it's on the permit and then also having the date for the um, unconfined stream work, which won't happen on this project, but just in case having that also listed, I think is a good thing. Um, you know, the more places you have it, the less people can miss it. So uh, item seven. Kate, I have a question. Um, 6A, the stream bed shall be graded to include a channel six feet wide, one foot deep. Did you say that is shown on the plan, which will now be dated 221? Yes, so. 210, 200. Yeah, they're creating like a foul wag in the middle. So when you look at the plans, <laughs> that you see the profile I think shows it the best. So looking at. I'm just wondering why we have to put it in the condition if it's already in the plan, I guess. Well, I had put it in there because of the fact that it came from, the, those were like the little recommendations on the bottom of the fisheries uh, memorandum. Oh. So you're accommodating comments from DEEP fisheries? Uh, yeah, we don't have to. No, I mean, it's belt and suspenders. It doesn't, it's, doesn't hurt anything. <clears throat> I just was confused by it. Yeah, but you know, um, let me just look and see what for <clears throat> your. I remember seeing this, Mike. Yeah, the, that's pretty much any job they recommend that is uh, a, a little channel that concentrates flow on low flow days. It gives the fish the best chance to still use the channel. Yeah, so. Um, okay, just moving on. Seven, 
All work shall be in conformance with the approval and application materials as submitted for this permit approval. Any modifications to the approved plans must be reviewed and approved by the Grammy Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Commission or their designated agent. Um, <clears throat> other belt and suspenders, erosion control shall be maintained until the site has achieved permanent stabilization. Permanent stabilization is defined as 70% permanent vegetation cover over 90% of the area. A stockpile of erosion control shall remain on site to prepare controls to repair controls as necessary. Um, the IWC shall be notified in writing at least 48 hours in advance of erosion controls being removed. Um, item nine, excavated soil shall not be brought off property without notification and approval of the Office of Community Development. The applicant shall supply the destination in writing for any excavated soil removed from the property. So that's just standard, making sure we're not filling another wetland when it goes off the property. Um, this permit is valid for a period of five days from the date of issuance. And upon completion of construction and site stabilization, the IWC shall be notified in writing that the work is complete and final inspection may be completed at that time. All I got. Anyone have any comments or questions on that? Dave, you may want to check with the public. Uh, we have a Craig here, and I'm not sure if he had any comments. Okay. Um, does anyone from the public have any questions or comments on the, this uh, project? No, not as far as inland wetlands material is, not from the my, not from myself anyway. Greg okay. must have gone for a cup of coffee. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out what's going on here. I've lost the control of it. It's going to happen to keep this. Hi, hi, this is Craig. I have no comment. And Craig, um, are you here for this project? Yes. If you just wouldn't mind stating your full name and address for the record. My name is Craig Perry. Address is 65 Bushy Hill Road, Granby, Connecticut. Thank you very much. Prior Wetlands Commissioner. Nice to see you back. Thank you. <clears throat> So that was coffee you went to get, Craig? <laughs> no, I just got off the couch because my wife was talking right behind me. <laughs> just note the time, and I'm wondering what you went to the refrigerator to get, but that's okay. <laughs> Don't tell, Craig. Don't tell. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see everyone again. Good seeing you. Is a motion to close the hearing in order? Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I completely lost control of this. I, I, Mr. Chairman, I think a uh, motion to close the public hearing is in order. <laughs> okay. So, so we've gotten all this back information on record. Okay. We're not going to cut ourselves off on anything by closing the hearing right now. Okay. Other than public yeah, comment. Pardon? Other than public comment. Well, I thought that was part of the hearing. But if you close the public hearing, you've stopped the public comment. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. I mean, that's what we're doing here is allowing the public to make comments. Yeah. They haven't done it. Said, okay. Uh, Morell made a motion. Close the public hearing. We hear a second on that. Second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on this? Hearing none. All those in favor of closing the public hearing. Aye. 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 Anyone uh, against closing the public hearing? Anyone want to abstain? Okay. And we will. Close the public hearing on this Griffin Road bridge reconstruction public project. Okay, the next one is the one on Hungry Road over the same Hungry Brook. Uh, we'll open the public 
hearing on that, and let Mike make his presentation on that. Okay. Yeah, I'll be checking off. Thank you, people. Uh, everybody, Craig, uh, Kurt will be in touch, I'm sure. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay, can you guys see this? Hungary Road. Good. Yes. Okay. Um, I guess the first thing we should say, to the best of my knowledge, this is Copper Hill Brook. It's 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 vain, but um, that would be my guess. And the only reason I guess it's important is that the state requires you put a sign up from coming from each direction that says what the name of the brook is. Um, um, otherwise, it's not particularly important. Um, so anyways, this is the existing is a culvert and we're replacing it in kind. Um, looking down at it, this is to the going to the right and up is what we think is Copper Hill Brook. Uh, to the left is Hungary Brook and obscured by the big pine tree that's in the upper left corner is the main channel of Hungary Brook, which goes up to the, what's it, the Congerbond Lakes. Uh, so that, that's definitely the main channel of the thing. Uh, you can see the floodplain here. This area was studied in detail but no floodway was determined. So it's, there are actual water surface elevations included in the flood study for this area, but no floodway. And then you also see again in the red is the property lines. And going ahead, what's there now are twin corrugated metal culverts the total width is 27 feet because there's a gap in between the two culverts. Uh, and once again, they are more or less square to the road. And they're also in poor condition uh, and hydraulically inadequate. Uh, once again, there's no floodway, but there is a flood study. And the drainage area is about four and a third square miles. So this is looking north to, I think Suffield is right about at the tree line in the background. This is looking south in the town. And these are the upstream and downstream faces of the existing culverts. You notice there's material filling in the culverts that frequently occurs. In, in low sloped culverts like this, they're pretty much flat. So there's no velocity through them. And you can see that they're starting to rust. They're quite old and this, this is also common that they'll start to deteriorate. And as they rust, they lose strength and they start to collapse. They lose their shape. So here we are, you can see the width of the floodway upstream versus the width of the floodplain, I'm sorry, downstream, which is an indication that they're hydraulically inadequate. The water comes over the road for about a thousand feet, in, theoretically in the hundred year flood. This is the same kind of drawing as previous, only thing the, the channel is not quite as dark but you can see there are more extensive wetlands upstream and downstream. Basically, the, the road is a fill, fill slope across a very large swampy area. So once again, the same outline. Uh, 
you're going to install coffer dams to, to isolate one of the culverts while the other one is used to pass flow through uh, in the temporary condition. And uh, so one new culvert would be built inside the coffer dams and then the coffer jams would be adjusted to push the water into the new culvert and the second of the old ones would be removed and the second new culvert would be constructed. Uh, the requirement is that we put two feet of natural stream bed material in the culvert to make uh, the fish feel like they're in a natural environment and encourage them to pass through. Uh, so that will be done as a requirement for the core permit. We'll have to do a core permit for a culvert. And uh, finish the road work after the culverts are installed and complete the remaining uh, restoration type work. So once again, uh, you have a, a large watercourse impact and uh, uh, a small wetland impact totaling uh, 1,350 square feet. Uh, once again, also the entirety of the job is within the floodplain. And you can see the same thing. We remove 196 cubic yards and replace 178 because we're about doubling the size of the culvert from the existing to the proposed condition. So here's uh, the elevations. You can see uh, the, uh, let me zoom in a little here. You can see where the old culverts used to be, the size of them, and you can see the size of the new culverts in comparison and the fill at the bottom of the culvert. So this is the temporary condition. In the first phase, we put the uh, coffer dams around the uh, south culvert and remove, the, remove that and put the new one in. And when that one's ready, you just alter the thing to uh, direct the water into the new one and remove the second one and uh, put in the second new culvert. It's the same kind of hydraulic information. You can see uh, 800 CFS is the 100 year flood here. Uh, and we have some small improvement to the water surface upstream. You have the large swamp area, so there's really no uh, need to over excavate and make the thing any larger. The area isn't going to ever be developed. So we do show modest improvement of about three tenths of a foot uh, in the uh, hydraulic condition. Uh, so once again, the hydraulic stuff, uh, the water overtops during the design storm. 836 is the design flood. Uh, there's the reduction of about four inches in the 100 year flood elevation. And then the estimate of an average day is eight CFS at this location. This site is within an NDDB site. And so when we asked, uh, we, we were told that there is a plant that's common to the area that is endangered. Uh, it's a state listed species. It's not a federally listed species. And the only recommendation they had was to limit the construction work to minimize the chance of affecting the, uh, the plant. Um, and we were going to do that anyway, so hopefully we won't impact any of it. Uh, and then this is similar to the previous one, uh, keep out of the channel, uh, except for the, the time of year, uh, things will be, uh, protected all times. Uh, 
the only difference is for this one, because you have a culvert, it's mandated that we have to go for what used to be a category two permit, which also requires the 401 water quality control permit from deep. Uh, so these things are filed together as a package and uh, deep will review the job and make a recommendation to the Corps of Engineers. The Corps can't make a determination until deep approves the 401 quality certification. And then the Corps presumably will go ahead and approve the, uh, the Corps permit. We want to change the name of the brook. What's that? We want to change the name of the brook on that previous slide. We have Hungary Brook on there. We decided that it's Copper Hill Brook, right? Yeah, well, we could do that, sure. But this is just the presentation. It's not part of the the okay. official record of anything. Okay. It's, it's just a demonstration of our confusion on the matter. <laughs> okay. So this also would hopefully be constructed this year. And being a covert, it's somewhat cheaper. And once again, it's a 50-50 split between the town bonding and the state funding. And uh, same contacts as for the previous project. So that will be it here. Okay, any, any comment on the commission on this presentation so far? Kate, did you want to go through the letter with the, your comments? Sure. Um, so this one, very similar. Um, there is a, what I didn't read in the last one was the beginning of the letter, which um, pretty much discusses what we talked about with section 1.10 uh, for environmental compliance from CONDOT's general conditions of the contract and um, that the contractor must comply with this section. And there also be a field engineer overseeing the work to ensure compliance to environmental requirements of the plans and any potential alternative methods proposed by the contractor and approved. So then the comments begin. Uh, work that is occurring on the properties known as 255 and I have 256, that should be 220. So we were having discussions and uh, 220 is, is the correct uh, number on that. And that is reflected on the application that is currently in Town Hall. Uh, Hungry Road are within the project area. The owner's signature Regarding the application are required for a complete application, please apply. This will also require the application form be amended, which we took care of that. Um, staff can complete this. Please list the owner's properties clearly on the permit plans where applicable. I didn't see that the owners were listed on the permit plans. Um, well, they're right here in the area. They, they should be on the existing condition plan sheet. The, the surveyor does that, so it's uh, official. Oh, oh so, okay, my, my apologies. I'm looking at a, the condensed version. So, okay, that's good. Let me just pull that up real quick. So do we have the existing condition sheet? You should have that in the construction plan set. So I have I have sheet two, I have sheet one through six, and sheet two is the general plan. I don't see the names on that one. Uh, well, the construction plan set is the full plan set. It's like 20 pages. So what I don't have, okay. We sent those to you, but you might not have printed those out. <laughs> But the existing condition plan, which is prepared by the surveyor, will have this statement. Now we're formally and the property owner, which is how we got these things. We transferred them from the, the plan provided by the surveyor. Uh, I'm sure that they would, 
still be in that plan sheet. Okay, okay. So um, the responses from WMC, uh, WMC re-understands the town staff have or are in the process of requiring signatures from property owners for doing work on the respective properties. The application form does not lend itself to adding multiple applicants. The effective letters were included as an attachment to the overall application package. Um, and that one still references 256 Hungry Road. And I confirmed with Kirk that there was no need for staging or storage or anything on that property. So that would be strictly limited to 255 and 220 again. Uh, this, blah, 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 where was I? Uh, the effective letters were included as a We believe that. This, along with the signatures required from the town, will be sufficient. Based on our experience, the standard practice, most municipalities with similar projects. So it's my understanding that we have a sign off in our folder in town hall from 255, the owner of 255 Hungry Road. Um, sorry, 220 Hungry Road. In 255, um, Kirk is still in the process of working with them, but he has a verbal approval. You can explain, Kirk. Sorry, had to get down to the corner with the cursor. Yes, I do. I've spoken to him on a couple of times, and in fact, I'm going to do a site visit with him tomorrow where I'm comfortable in saying that uh, we'll have signed document by, by the weekend, if not even tomorrow afternoon. So just just a good visual aid sometimes to meet with people and um, and he's not concerned he's comfortable with the whole job just wanted to do like I said a little visual aid All right, and this next comment is my favorite response I'm gonna say Mike I don't know if you put this one together but I had fun reading it I wish you could kind of tell us a little bit more about what you did because it was fun. All right, so the perm number two, the permit plans label the brook as Quarry Brook, AKA Copper Hill Brook in the USGS topographic map labels this brook as Hungry Brook. Please clarify in all application materials the formal name of the brook. It appears to be Hungry Brook. So Mike's uh, WMC's response. Uh, and I did notice that Fisheries called this Copper Hill Brook. So um, their response did know that this was Copper Hill Brook as well. Uh, so uh, WMC response. Unfortunately, determination of the correct name is not aided by the review of online data. The following image is from the CT Eco website, which is a compendium of data from the state sources. The subject brook is clearly identified as Copper Hill Brook. However, the numeric identifier uh, 4320-15-2-R1 for the brook is that for the main stem of Hungry Brook. When looking at the watercourses in the field, it is clear that the main stem of Hungry Brook is the other branch that runs north to the west side of the road. When comparing the drainage area of each branch, the branch that flows north along Quarry Road, labeled 4320-17-3-R1, has a significantly larger drainage area than the branch the road crosses at the culvert. The branch of the stem is also significantly wider than the branch under the road that is passed by the culvert. The branch to the north comes from Congamon Lakes, as Mike was discussing. Given the information available, it appears that the name of the tributary of interest is correct, Copper Hill. And the numeric values assigned from the gazetteer are not shown correctly. Further, the current topographic maps from USGS do not include stream names. Very nice. So um, my thought on that, just to um, add to it, is that maybe we want to have a condition in our approval, just because it, like even uh, George Logan's report references at Hungry Brook, um, just so that there's some clarity on what, for this project, the purpose and what the, the stream will be called. Um, however, I don't know if we want to nail that down if something is still questionable um i'm not sure who we would ask to be honest <laughs> <laughs> we could give a descriptor that it's draining that marshy area to the east side of hungry brook yeah the, <laughs> up, the upstream boundary of that is over by the trail 
It goes over to that area. The what? The uh, trail, the, the rail trail is oh, okay. the east of this. And the drainage area is basically bound between this road and the, and the trail. Okay. Yeah, some kind of a, you know, descriptor that way rather than uh, use a name. Well, like I said, the thing is, uh, the state requires that you put up signs on the road coming from both directions, noting the name of the brook. So, otherwise, it would be just a, a, a trivial interest, but because there are signs being made, it's important to have the right name. I find this is, a, this is kind of a fun clarification for the town. So we know what we're calling this going forward. But I do, I do see exactly, Mike, what you're saying um, with Copper Hill Brook and how it's that smaller tributary coming into the larger Hungry Brook. So, um, and then the fact that DEP Fisheries, if that's what they're calling it, um, and they actually call that out in their review letter. I guess I would call them a reliable source. <laughs> Who buys these signs? It's part of the contract, so the town pays for one and the state pays for the other, so to speak. It's 50-50. So, shouldn't the town decide what the name is? Well, yeah, I guess you could if you want to have it called something else, but then you'll have a sign that has a name different than what some people perceive the brook to be named. So. Uh, you know, I, I really don't have a dog in this fight, so you can name the brook whatever you like. Yeah. I, 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 if you don't, if uh, if I may, I just quickly went on to Google, and they call it Hungary. Hungary brook. Well, they steal all their information, right? So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is it, you know, I mean, why couldn't you put uh, one, a.k.a. the other? <laughs> I, I don't think the state would be amused by that. Well, yeah. Yeah. I think we have to pick a name. I mean, that's not really part of our discussion. To me, okay. anyhow, the um, are you going on to the other comments there, Kate. Yep. So you know, I, I guess just to close that out, the only thing is, does because the documents are all a little bit varying. Do we need do we need to put clarification in anything that we present? That's all. Um, for moving forward, or would we just leave that to the decisions of the powers to be? So, item number three: uh, Please provide details for mitigation methods on the permit plans. Please show the locations and details for storage, removal, staging area location, dewatering methods and location, and final dewatering basin shall be established outside of the wetland limits. Please define where. Spaces provided within the project area for this feature, in addition, as applicable, considering additional, consider adding alternative dewatering methods on the permit plan to allow for flexibility of methods used. So the WMC response is locations for the material storage, staging, and dewatering have been added to the plans. No removal is anticipated. Stabilization is required for all disturbed areas. So on all these projects, my Biggest concern is when dewatering needs to happen because that seems to be where all the um, unintended impacts can occur because I can quickly get out of hand and it's a tight area. So um, I believe that it is on, let's see, what sheet you have that on. It was added to the plans on sheet. Six, uh, a dewatering basis shall be established outside the wetland limits, and then the uh, section from uh, section 1.10 for CONDOT gives a full um, reference to the 2002 sedimentation erosion control guidelines, and then from there they can choose their dewatering method. So um, that one essentially is taken care of. Um, let's see. Item number four, 
Uh, Still fence barrier erosion controls are shown on the, uh, to isolate the overall project area. It's recommended that alternative barrier control me methods be presented to allow for flexibility of materials used in the fields, i.e. erosion control logs, uh, logs and silt fence, etc. WMC response, alternative methods may be considered if proposed by the contractor. However, adding alternatives to the plans could be construed as limiting rather than informative. The contractor must comply with conduct section 1.10, which is included in the bid documents and is enclosed. Um, so, what was I gonna say to that? Um, I did notice that you had, I don't know if you changed it from the initial plans, but where it says SF as on the legend for sheet two, it says sedimentation control system and says that on, on both project plans. So that gives them <laughs> the flexibility. It's not called out as silt fence. Yeah. I like that. So uh, item number five, considering the calculated changes in water surface level from the culvert replacement activities, please detail how these changes will modify the hydrology of the wetland and the stream bank and if necessary, methods to ensure the current functions and values of these features are maintained if not enhanced. WMC response, minor changes to water surface elevations are predicted for major flood events. The proposed condition has water surface elevations slightly lower than existing conditions. By lowering the flood event water surface elevations, the stream is more often confined to the main channel rather than extending into the overbank areas as such. There is less environmental impact during floods in the proposed condition than for the existing condition. In addition, the water surface elevations in question are for the 100 year flood event or the 100% annual chance flood event. Altering the banks of the stream for flood event for a flood event of this minimal probability would greatly increase the environmental impacts to address a flood event unlikely to occur in the near future. So, um, this explains it much better, what was shown in the table. Thank you, Mike, and um, correct me if I'm wrong. So essentially what's being said here is that we're not dealing with the everyday um, where there'll be like a, a half a foot or three quarters of a foot of the bank additionally exposed uh, upstream. We're only dealing with a flood condition which would then change those elevations, correct? Yeah, so uh, as, as you recall, I mean, well, I can go there can find that flood map. You can see here the flood is everywhere. And we're just saying in the 100 year flood, it's four inches less deep in this area. So it, it's not really a big deal. Yeah, my concern is that you'd have like you know, three quarters of a foot of bank exposed on a daily basis that would have to modify to accommodate the new conditions. And that's not the case, correct? No, essentially the existing condition is pretty much the same. So I'm all set there. Uh, I don't know. Unfortunately, that whole upstream area has been overtaken by Phragmites. So uh, it's become very dense weeds in here. and. There's not much you can do about the hydraulics up there unless you remove them all, which is pretty much impossible. Okay, item six. Um, this I actually um, copy and paste it incorrectly, so there's no concern with item six that came from Griffin Road. Um, Item seven, sheet PM3. So um, this is pretty much the same. This seems to be a good location to include water course calculations um, to the impact calculation legend. I didn't see us taking credit for the creation of stream bit. The notes on this sheet and sheet PMT-06 detail the final stabilization of disturbed areas. Please define what restored means. On the permit plans, i.e. 70% native vegetation growth, over 90% of the area or something like that. So that has been added. I believe that that is in the same location. It would be on sheet PMT03, note number two it has that detail. Um, 
and the response to that is WMC. These plans will also be forwarded to the United States Army Corps of Engineers, who does not allow for credit created watercourse area to mitigate for the reported impacts to the existing watercourse. So it is not advisable to add this information to the plan set. In lieu, we report that a plus 320 square feet of new watercourse area created by widening the hydraulic opening of the bridge. So we have that in our documents, which is a positive thing. Um, number eight, permit plans show a dash type line immediately adjacent to the silt fence that called out as approximate slope. On some sheets, on other sheets, do not define this line type, nor does the legend. Please add clarifications to the permits. WMC response, this line type is added to the legend in the plans. Item nine, will the project require the use of road control blank blankets? If so, please show or define the location of these features on the permit plans. And we've heard this before, WMC response, erosion control blankets are not anticipated for such short slopes. However, if the contractor proposes them, they may be installed. If a change order allowing the added expense is approved. And item 10, a draft approval letter and conditions of approval have been attached for consideration and comments. WMC response noted. Does anyone have any comments or questions on that? Okay. Um, so the tape here, um, your conditions, so that would be the next item. Sure. I don't know if you Why want to uh, ask if there's any public questions or comments on the person. Anyone public have a question or comment? Hearing none. Is we go on to your, your uh, conditions. Yes, so um, going looking at the conditions uh, in the first part of it regarding approval of application for the replacement of bridge over I have Hungry Brook on Hungry Road. So we can put Hungry, uh, sorry, Copper Hill Brook, AKA Hungry Brook on Hungry Road, if you wanna do that. And then that, or just leave it as Copper Hill Brook. I would leave it as Copper Hill Brook. Okay. Anyone else? I agree with Dave. I think it's not a bad idea to differentiate the uh, stream coming into Hungry Brook because it could be confusing to consider, you know, to consider the branch or the, the incoming stream as part of Hungry Brook. Okay. Copper Hill Brook it is. Um, so going through these, these are fairly similar. And um, so items one through four are pretty much the same. Um, item one, we will uh, have the plan date be February 10th, 2021, if that's okay with you, Mike. That's fine, yeah. Okie dokie. And um, the only thing I might change and would recommend it on the past one too is in, on item number four, email and letter correspondence, you know, considering these letters that we've had going back and forth, um, just adding email and letter to an item number four. And then conditions, um, we're pretty much the same going all the way down through. Um, and then item number four was something that we could remove because we do have the plans, correct? So yeah, we removed item number four. And one of the things I had put on here and um, Abby and, and Kirk confirmed that we won't be needing it is we normally take our bond for projects, if you'll notice. And because this is our project and our money and the state money, um, you know, we're bonding ourselves, so the, that hasn't been included. Um, so back to the conditions, uh, item number five, um, the construction inspector nominated be on site during construction activities, same as the last one, you have to approve them. Uh, and then item number six, in accordance with deep fisheries division determination dated 9-22-20 and as amended is important that the proper Erosion and sedimentation controls be installed and maintained throughout the duration of project. 
Um, so essentially, this is stating the same thing about uh, unconfined in stream work and just taking that from their letter. Uh, as presented, number seven, as presented by the deep NDDB correspondence from November 9th, 2020, there is a population of state special concern plant skunk current uh, ribs glandulosum in the vicinity of this project. Let me add a quotation. No, I'm, I'm good. To prevent impacts to this plant, extensive lim uh, to prevent impacts to this plant, limit the overall footprint of the project and minimize vegetation clearing. If extensive vegetation clearing is required, a qualified botanist should be hired to determine if state listed plants are present and to develop a mitigation plan. So again, this is coming from their letter. We're just belt and suspenders. Uh, number eight, uh, all work has to be in conformance with our permit approval and we need to know if anything changes. Uh, erosion controls and keeping things stabilized and what stabilization means also being notified before the erosion controls are removed is item nine. Item 10, um, if you bring it off the site for materials, let us know where you're dumping it. Um, I'm paraphrasing, obviously. Uh, 11, permits valid for five years. And 12, uh, upon completion of construction, state civilization will be notified for final inspection. Anyone have any questions or comments or additions or anything that I want to propose? Anyone? Any comments from the public? Questions or suggestions? Craig Perry, 65 Bushy Hill Road. Um, I have no comments concerning the bridges. Uh, just one, um, the um, comment suggestion from Mr. Ladati, his earlier comment, uh, I did visit the refrigerator between bridges. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now on, on this one, um, the fact that we don't have an actual signature um, from one of the property owners, um, and if we were to approve this uh, without that, uh, we don't want to cause any kind of um, thought that we were being derelict or you know that we weren't following the rules. Now, Kirk has said that he has got uh, gotten a positive response from the, the property owner and that he doesn't have any comments. So I would think that we could, could in good conscience, um, um, entertain a motion to approve this. Now, does anyone have any? comments on that I, I i'm just confused is it a requirement that we get the signature of the homeowner because uh i've always understood that you can't make a condition of an approval something that's out of control out of the control of the applicant um you can't force somebody to sign the document so you know what's the genesis of the requirement that this landowner sign sign off on this project. This what? comes from, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, could you do that, Kate? Sure, so section uh, 7.5B of our application requirements, um, it states the owner's name, mailing address, and telephone number in written consent of the landowner if the applicant is not the owner of the land upon which the subject activity is proposed. So these are, um, all applications shall include the following. No. So I think it's just a um, way to make sure that the owners are aware of what's being proposed on their property and having it as a complete application. However, um, you know, knowing that Kirk's had the correspondence and it's just been a limitation of uh, having time within their schedules to get together, um, you know, as we're getting together tomorrow to go over the details. And, and get that signature, um, you know, 
I don't think any of that would change. And as, us being the town and that we have to go through other permitting processes and we would not be able to have this access. And Kirk, you could probably describe a little bit more about, you know, the fact that this will have to come before the project commences um, in terms of what your process is. Maybe that'll be helpful to the commission. Sure, it's just it's just some of the detail. He wants to see what the restoration is going to be, but it's like he he told me, and I had another conversation with him today. You know, he he's going to sign off on it. He just wanted to do a site visit so we can see what it really entails and uh, get a better comfort level and going forward. But he said both he and his wife had discussed it, and they were comfortable with the project. They were comfortable with us going ahead. So now it just came down to the last minute formality. And we couldn't, like Kate said, you know, between uh, the occupations that we both have, well, I could have made, but he, it, just him getting there to uh, do this site visit. Can I say something too, please? The, uh, the construction plans show easements on the uh, affected properties and the state will not award the funds to do the kind of the work until the easements are agreed upon with the property owners. They're temporary construction easements to access their property during the construction process. So these are legal agreements between the property owner and the, and the town. Can Kirk, we? Is he aware of all that? Kirk, is he aware of all that? Yeah. Okay. He would. He will definitely be aware of tomorrow or the rest of the detail. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, it's been a it's been a cordial relationship, and I just ask that you take my word on it. And I am really comfortable in what's going to transpire tomorrow, so that it won't hold this project up in any way. Well, can we just say in the motion that we approve it yeah. pending the final sign off for the landowner? You could do that. The only weird thing is taking in additional information after you close the public hearing. Yeah, it's 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 a technical defect. It may seem like a small detail, but it's a technical defect in the we don't have a complete application in, in a theoretical sense. And, you know, given my profession, we deal in the remote theoretical possibilities. <laughs> a landowner could say no, in which case the town does have recourse. It can, you know, do this by eminent domain or, you know, condemnation rather. Um, and I, and I, I agree with Kirk. We're never going to get to that point. I, I, my sense of it isn't, but, uh, <laughs> I'm really well, with the legal technicality aspect of it. Well, how do we, uh, as Laurel said, we could put that in there, and this this is all being recorded, so it's not like we've tried to slip something through. You know, we've had discussions, and people are on record as having said things. Um, so, I, as far as I'm being on legal grounds, I think we're okay. Uh, it's just don't want to start setting precedents that we don't um, don't want well, to have to have our feet held to the fire. But if, as John says, it's an incomplete application without that, I, you know, I I don't want to hold up this project. I think it's important. It's in the public interest. You know, I would. Um, I could live with making it subject to the signature by that particular landowner. I just think in the future we have to really uh, make sure the application is complete. And, you know, we ran into this issue last year on a project um, where we didn't feel comfortable with it, it not getting all the information completed that we're, we were requiring as part of the application. Um, there's reasons to make, to insist upon it. So maybe going forward, on other projects, we insist that all the signatures be obtained before the public hearing. Well, you know, if you're, if you're not comfortable, what we could do is, uh, would be to table it until
until the next meeting and when we do have the signature or have a special meeting sometime during the month. I was say, we could have a special meeting. What's the notice requirement? Uh, 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> I would, why don't we reverse it and say if the signature doesn't come in, we'll have a special meeting. Um, notice. Once you close it, it's gone. Pardon me? Once you close it, it's gone. Yeah. Um, right. That's right, too. Sorry. So we really uh, want to like fit that as a condition and discussion item. And I do know that this, and Kirk, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, in terms of this having to go to the Army Corps for essentially the, what was the category two review it's going to take some time um so this one has more time constraints on it in terms of it getting out of this process and getting into the next processes with the state and the feds so there are other checks and balances moving forward on this one um just you know beyond just just our application but you know if you if we wanted to do something where we just um had a special meeting since we're zooming we knew we had a day that we could all get together early next week. That may be a way to do it as well. So leave the public hearing open. Let Kirk obtain the signature tomorrow and have a special meeting next week to proceed with the uh, vote to approve. Correct. Or disapprove as the case may be, but not prejudging anything. I know everybody has busy schedules and I've been on committees myself. So uh, going forward, I want to say thank you. If, if it, and if it requires a special meeting and to take off where we left, that's uh, appreciated. So um, I'll certainly get back to Kate tomorrow and let her know how everything worked out. And then it, it is like she says, it's 24 hours public notice and uh, Monday's a holiday. It doesn't make any difference to me. If you guys want to meet, doesn't, I don't care, but, uh, I'm sure we can put something on the DACA for Tuesday. Anyone else? That's, that's fine it? with me. We can notice it on Friday. If you get the, uh, the signature Kirk, and then we can't do a, we can't do a meeting on a public holiday. Right. So we do it on Tuesday. I am only guessing that I, I, I think don't know. So my question is where staff has a short day on Friday for putting together the agenda and getting it noticed. Oh. Kirk is meeting tomorrow. If anything needs to be ferreted out, do we want to think about like a Wednesday just so that there's some comfort time for staff to do things? I don't think the days a month makes it correct me if i'm wrong but um while a month would be very um damaging to the process of you know days are are not going to be the same no my request and with all the disclaimers i put in is that we expedite this and i've lost track of days so tomorrow um <laughs> that's so i would i would think that we could certainly prepare an agenda and have it uh, ready to go Tuesday night. If not, at worst case scenario, it's Wednesday. If that meets with the rest of you. Mm -hmm. Fine. Stay with me. I could, I could live with either one of those nights. So. Yep. Because of President's Day, um, do you guys in that's, town hall take the day off? That's Monday. Yeah. yeah Monday's off. So that means but, nobody's gonna be in the office. Um, so, you know, my recommendation would be for the 17th, if who's on, on this call right now has uh, availability. That's Wednesday the 17th. I can do yep. Wednesday the 17th. I can too. Me too. What time? You guys call it. Seven. seven. I would keep it at seven. It's gonna be a short meeting. Yeah. Now, do we have to hold over the public hearing or can we close the public hearing? And second question, we can't. Did you say, Dave? Okay. We can't pause it. We can't pause it. Okay, got it. So, are we going to also hold over the approval of uh, the first one? No, we did that. Two separate applications. Okay. Yeah. So we can approve that 
once the public I, meeting closed. I think I think we did that. No. After I got we, 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 we just closed, closed the public hearing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh, okay. If there's any reason to not vote on the approval tonight, then I would entertain a motion that we approve the application for the um, uh, Griffin Road Bridge project. Well, don't we have to we, extend the public hearing on this project first? Yeah. yeah I would I say guess. finish this one up first, guys. Keep yeah, going. let's finish this one. Jennifer, I hate you. <laughs> Sorry, Jennifer. <laughs> okay. I did. I'd entertain a motion that we uh, extend the public hearing on the Copper Hill Brook Bridge uh, under Quarry or under a Hungary Road until Wednesday the 17th. At 7 p.m. At 7 p.m. So moved. <laughs> second. We have a second. Coming, Thomas. Fred, second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Oh, say nay. Any ex <clears throat> uh, abstentions? Okay. Thank you. We'll continue the public hearing on this uh, bridge uh, on Hungary Road for the uh, Copper Hill. Okay. Now we'll go back to the the. Uh, application for the, the new bridge on Griffin Road, which we proposed the public hearing on, and we now need uh, a motion to accept the application. Grant a permit, I guess. Is what you approve a letter? Okay, I make a motion to approve the application for replacement of the bridge over Hungry Brook on Griffin Road um with conditions as set forth in the proposed conditions from our inland wetlands um staff person dated january 28th 2021 um with a couple of modifications to those written recommendations the first one being under her first four enumerated conditions environmental permit plans state project number 905-002 we need to add a date to the plan and the date will be february 10th 2020 moving down through 2021 21 thank you still saying 20 2021 <laughs> thank you um moving down to the second set of um of enumerated conditions excuse me john Sorry. Yeah, uh, just because yes. we were talk we're talking about this on the um, last one, so item four um, would be email and letter correspondence. Email and letter correspondence. Number four in the first set of uh, recommendations or proposed conditions would read email and letter correspondence to date. Another modification would be in the second set of conditions that the office of community development shall be notified at least 40 hours 48 hours prior to the start of a construction activities rather than maintenance activities and then skipping down to number four we eliminate that as a condition as it's uh, unnecessary given what we've done it up above with the date those are the only modifications that I come up with for the conditions enumerated um, in the January 28th, 2021 letter from our staff person. The only other one that I have is on item eight. Instead of the word prepare in the fourth line down, first word, have that be repair. Yeah, I would include that mo in the motion as well. Teamwork. Want to second that? Second. Does anyone have any 
any discussion on it. Hearing none, uh, ask for all of them to say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Hearing none, how about any abstentions? Set on this, or we just yeah. Okay, we don't need to do that anymore. We're really lost. I'm an analog guy in a digital world. Not having a <laughs> one of the just screens. I <laughs> Continued the public hearing till next Wednesday on the second. Well, oh, for Hungry Road. For Hungry Road. We didn't do that yet. Oh, no, we're good. Yeah, we did. We, we already did that. We're yeah. good for other business. Yes. Okay. Agent update. Okay. Not that I haven't talked enough tonight. Um, so, are you guys going to email um, that I sent over this evening, and that uh, came from Darcy, which on Friday, March 5th, from 10 to 11.30 a.m., they're having a Zoom um, training on this Avenza maps, uh, so you can kind of read through that, and if you want to attend, uh, there's no pre-registration, you just have to log on to the meeting and be one of the first 200 people to log on, and you can be trained in using that. Um, the other thing that the commission had asked me to look into at the last meeting was the forestry activities at the McLean Game Refuge. And um, I did speak with Darcy Winther on this in regards to whether or not the uh, bridge that's being proposed to go over to access the areas would be something we would need a permit for, or can we do that as an RFR? So uh, the answer was, it can go either way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So whatever the commission would like to do. So um, if it was something that they did and then it happened to create something that was in violation of the exemptions, um, we'll just say overall both uh, as a right and on regulated use exemptions, then the commission would then be in an enforcement situation. Um, if there was a permit, issued, then the commission would have a little bit more ability to review and to um, have some more control over that. So um, it's, you know, she really could go either way, but it was sounding as if, you know, if you wanted more oversight, then the permit would be a safer bet if you had some concerns that something was going to change in those conditions, which would make it to be not exempt. So, um, with that being said, you know, I'm going back to the Dismal Brook Preserve, and they had that bridge going across there. Um, we did that as an RFR. So, that one had a roadway right up to the edge, you know, an already established roadway right up to the edge of a bridge abutment, which was in the upland still, going over the water course to another abutment, and then continuing on the roadway. So, all the work was to be done in the upland area, and as long as they weren't going to be filling the wetland area, then they did meet that exemption. Now, this one, we have this floodplain wetland factor um, for the ramping up, ramping down, and st stabilization of the ends of the bridge. So, you know, her comment in regards to this one is because of the conditions of their work, which is to be in frozen conditions, um, you, you know, this one could be relatively uh, confidently um, put as an exempt activity because of the of the conditions. However, if those conditions were to change, so like let's say it took them an extra week and things started to melt because global warming is starting or whatever, then they would fall out of the provisions which put them into that category. So uh, I did contact um, Connor over at the refuge and this project is on hold uh, for this season. So if the commission does feel in a 
a particular fashion that they'd want to have this go through. Uh, we could do some revisions between now and I'm sure next winter, uh, unless they change their route for access to this area. So, um, you know, really the frozen conditions on this one is what is what allows this to happen. And we're dealing with a floodplain wetland in these areas. We're not in a, at a muck swamp. So, you know, those two, those site specific um, conditions make it a little bit more uh, stable as an RFR. But um, whatever the commission prefers, um, we can do that. And um, as moving forward, we can also do that too. So your comments are, are very welcome. Respectfully to all, I'm going to sign off See you, Kirk. Okay. and call it a night. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, I think I, I caused um, a lot of the consternation at this point. It's just because, uh, it, you know, it seemed like there was going to be a lot of uh, activity constructing a temporary bridge across, you know, a pristine stream that runs through a game refuge. And, you know, I get that the activity, you know, my concern was that the activity may be exempt um, because of its agricultural nature. But the whole notion of creating this bridge, skidding these logs down, down gradient toward the river and then dragging them across a temporary bridge seemed pretty massive to me, just without knowing much else. So, um, it's, you know, did, what kind of reaction did you get from Connor at McLean's about, you know, if the fact that they're not going to do it this season gives me some comfort. There's a lot of time to to approach this now was he opposed to the idea of doing it by an application so we could we could hear uh you know he's been before this commission before obviously that was so we can hear the plans and get comfortable with it or so when i contacted connor it's just to see where he stood with the I'm project speaking for myself i'm not speaking for my fellow members yeah so when i contacted connor um it was just to find out what he was doing um so that kind of you know he wasn't doing anything so I haven't brought this to him specifically because of the fact that I wanted to get information from you because that would make a big difference in the discussion I will have with him. Um, I, in my past dealings with Connor, he's very responsible, um, very well thought out, very well researched in what he's doing. He has a board behind him before he does anything. So um, my, you know, um, feeling on this is that he, he wouldn't have an issue with however the town feels comfortable moving forward. So um, maybe he, he'd laugh at that, but I really, you know, he's looking to just do what's right. And that's what it's always been. So if, if you feel that it's right to come in for a permit for that, then I don't think that'd be an issue. And there's time for that too. I'd like to see us have a little more control over it and the form of a permit. Did look at the other project uh, that was off um, Sagata Road. No, um, that's the one at the bottom of the Mary Edwards property. Um, anyway, it was it was a similar um, project there. They were going to do some silviculture and across a brook, and we had them uh, provide a uh, in an application, a little more detail on what they were going to do. So, um, we do have on that. And I, th I think we should do it. I mean, as far as having uh, having them submit a permit application and some details on what they were going to do, the way they had it, it was sort of car car launch on their part, whatever they needed to. Slaps. I would agree. Okay. I would entertain a motion, I guess, that that uh, eight Del Connor that we the commission feels that we need to. Uh, an application with some more detail as far as the, you know, the bridge approach. Anyone 
Well, do we really need a motion? Or can we just instruct Kate? Well, I don't know. It's always safe. Not a, you know, I, I always say motion everything, and at least you're, you're coordinated that way, okay. just in case. I don't think you need it, though, in this case, but. Let's do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so move. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Good. Uh, Kate, could you do that? Could you contact Connor and tell him what the committee decided? Yes. Thank and um, what I what I will do too, you know, in light of this is when there is something of this nature that. Um, you know, because like when we came to that dismal brook, it's super similar, but not. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of these that are going to seem the same, but because of site conditions, they will be variable. So to make right. sure I'm in line with what the commission is comfortable with, um, I'm going to make sure, you know, some kind of checks and balance process is ha happening. Um, you know, the benefit of the RFR process when I can look these over is that people can move forward a little more, more quickly with what they're looking to do. So if I hold it off until the next commission meeting, um, you know, that might be what's necessary if it's something that's a little bit um, unorthodox or not straightforward. So I think if anything in the future seems to be more sensitive, like, like this one, um, where the guidelines for the sensitivity are, you know, this is related to the season, but um, I'll make sure I bring them to the commission for your decision on the RFR in those Good. cases. So and Kate, I think we had talked about that the last time we visited the issue. You know, we all we all trust your uh, expertise and your instincts, and um, we kind of most of the time we just allow it to go the RFR way. But we had talked about the idea that. You know, if the commission felt this way, they we could move for, move it to a public hearing. I mean, in the past, there's been things that come before this commission that before your uh, tenure with us, where we were like, "Whoa, how, <laughs> how did that not get a public hearing?" You know, so I just think it's sometimes better to proceed cautiously <clears throat> in these matters. No issue with that. You know, I'm here to serve you guys, so whatever you want, fine with me. So that's all I have in terms of uh, an agent update. Uh, the next item is this commissioner report correspondence. Uh, I don't remember seeing that before, or at least with that title. Is there, is there a commissioner report that? Uh, and of correspondence that we want to discuss. Okay. Does anyone have anything else they'd like to add to the agenda? Okay, hearing none. I made an entertain a motion that we adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Have a good night. Thank you, guys. See you, folks. Thank you. Take care.